At 8 p.m. on October 29th in 2012, Hurricane Sandy made landfall in Brigantine, New Jersey, only about 30 miles from the Delaware Bay shore. The storm was devastating for the people of the area, many of whom lost their homes and their livelihoods. It was equally hard on the area's wildlife, including the famous horseshoe crab and red knot, bringing them perilously close to extinction. You know, those waves times 10 started pounding these beaches and just pushed all the sand that was on the beach over into the marsh. We had this big scalloped beach. We had large areas of um, sod that was um, basically uh, undermined and, and exposed. You can't lay horseshoe crab eggs in here because the this muck is anoxic, so it's without any oxygen. So if a crab was to lay their eggs in this, then the eggs would just die. And so just in one day, this, this these very important beaches went from highly suitable to unusable. The American Littoral Society and Conserved Wildlife Foundation realized that if we planned and coordinated the way the coast was rebuilt, there was an opportunity to make it stronger than ever and more livable and sustainable both for its wildlife and its people. There, there seemed to be a lot of resentment uh, from uh, communities along the Bay Shore right after Hurricane Sandy um, with regards to access to FEMA money, uh, just generally a response from the state. I think a lot of focus has been placed on the Atlantic coastal beaches, whereas the Delaware Bay has never received that same ability to get ahead of it and, you know, do take proactive measures. And then here we come uh, with with funds and projects where we're actually on the ground doing things. This is a very interesting uh, grant program, one that I've never seen in my 30 plus year career in uh, environmental protection and conservation, in that we're restoring fish and wildlife habitats in a way that creates resiliency for communities that are in and around these habitats. Um, one of the things that's really great about habitat restoration is that for jobs per dollars per million, um, it tends to create a much higher number of jobs than other industry sectors do. If everybody gets invested in preserving and protecting the environment, it's, it's going to be better for everybody. It's going to be better for the environment, it's going to be better for the habitat, it's going to protect the shorelines in case of storm surges, but then it's also going to improve the ecosystem and, and, and create more jobs and help the tourism industry and it's going to be a win for everybody. Lots of people want to be on the coast and climate change and sea level rise doesn't really change that desire to be on the coast. Animals don't really have the option, those that are dependent on coastal ecosystems. So places where we can work to protect our uh, communities as well as habitat for coastal animals, um, it's a good fit. It's where we want to be where those win-win situations are. The needs of the region's people and its wildlife are not in competition. If we continue to be smart about how we rebuild, we can have a bayshore that is clean, strong, and economically thriving. By really understanding the natural environment of the bay, we're preparing everyone, plants, animals, and people, for the next storm and the one after that. We'll see how next time on New Jersey's Hidden Coast.